What's happening? It's Starlito. I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. You ever been right in the line of fire? How the hell you gonna tell me where to draw the line and why? I keep it on. All right. So we got a very special edition of Off the Porch today. Yeah. Uh, everyone, please welcome Starlito. How you doing, man? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Can't complain. I wasn't doing any good anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, so for folks that don't know, we are live on location in Nashville, man. So yeah. first off, you know, thank you for What's reaching up? out, inviting us out here to get this interview done. Yeah, so, welcome, man. man. Welcome, welcome to Nashville. You know, y'all always very hospitable to me. I come to your porch so you know, office or whatever. So yep. welcome, man. I have to yeah. show you some spots while you're here. Nah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, so and let's just jump right into it. So this past weekend, you dropped the album celebrated your birthday yeah and had the concert here in your hometown with don trip too man yeah how would you describe how these past like what 72 96 hours have been for you man a blur <laughs> it's been a blur uh it's been a lot of fun busy still been on daddy duty all the while you know navigating that and uh dropping an album to a pretty pretty good reception did a sold out show here at home. We said with bro, my stepbrother Craig. Uh he's about to drop his twelfth album of the year in a few days now. Um so it's you know, it was just very like uh fulfilling, I guess even would be a good word for it. Like I've I've been busy, it was like the best kind of busy. It's not like overwhelmed, it's just I've had a lot going on, a lot on my plate, but I've enjoyed it enjoyed it every step of the way. I had a, an event at the National Museum of African American Music here. Hmm. And, you know, the same day as the, the sold out show across town. And it was, you know, it was one of those moments like getting into different, certain doors, you know, opening for me, like on the strength of, I guess my namesake, brand name, the momentum of, of putting out an album, an indie album at that. It's like it's, it's pretty cool feeling, it's, you know. I don't, uh, I don't look, I don't get a sense of accomplishment via comparison to to what anybody else got going on. If anything, maybe comparing to where I started or where I came from. So just the same, man. You guys coming up, coming up the road and chopping it up with me here, like it's convenient because you know my daughter's on holiday break and you know. Uh, so I ain't have to really go too far. That that helped me out, but just as much, you know, it's like uh, as they say, if you build it, they'll come, and that's that's how I've probably felt these last few days. Cause I really been here, but I've had as much going on as times when I was touring or you know promoting an album coast to coast, and being able to do that like remote, pretty much, is kind of kind of a cool feeling. Like, yeah. I know when you first announced that the album was coming out this week, uh, fans went crazy. Yeah. Like you had been throwing little hints, little Easter eggs here and there. <laughs> yeah. Something may be coming. Um, so now that it's been a full weekend, like w what type of feedback are you seeing from the fans online right now? Um, I mean, the reception, like I said, has been really, really warm. With millions of streams. Uh, I posted something asking what was, you know, people's favorite favorite song off the album. Got thousands and thousands of responses, and they were all over the place. I think for sure, every song was somebody's favorite, mm -hmm. you know. And like even that is like, that's kind of to me suggests a job well done, because I firmly believe like everything's not for everybody, but something is for someone, you know, in terms of like even the artistry. Like there were um there were songs that I was making along the way of building an album that probably didn't make the cut or I didn't feel like fit the theme or this and that, but in terms of what I did put out as a body of work, I'm I'm definitely like I feel good about the way it's being received. It, I think at one point peak that number four on the Apple hip hop charts, and I think number 10 or 11 
overall. When it was number four, Nicki Minaj had all three of the first three <laughs> spots. Like she had like clean. So you're really number two, though. right? That's how I looked at it. But I mean, you know, that was, you know, that was even cool for whatever for metrics' sake. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm little old me doing this. You know, more or less on my own. Not not entirely on my own. I wouldn't say that, but you know, not in a big business sense of, of the music industry. Mm -hmm. Just kind of doing it when I feel like it, as I feel like it. So for it to be, you know, appreciated, anticipated, you know, well received, it's like, it's, it's, good, it's good with me. Yeah. yeah. And you had put out that letter um, mm -hmm. before the album dropped, kind of explaining your hiatus and everything. Um, Three and a half years, right? Since your yeah. last project? It's my last solo, yeah. Yeah. Now, during those three and a half years, were you still, like, recording solo songs? Were you still in the studio cooking up, or...? Yeah, uh... Occasionally. Nowhere near as much as I had been. I mean, you've been in the studio with me a few times, and... It was a lot of times I'd go to the lab, or I'm in the house trying to record, and it just... I just didn't feel inspired. Mm. I wasn't moved by it. I mean... I did a joint project with my guy Troy Money during that time, and I put out like a four track Jacking for Beats thing, a four of my foes too. So it was, you know, I was doing things in the studio, I guess, to try to not get so rusty or to completely set it aside. Like, bro, I went on a vacation, and it was just like something that I had uh, committed to doing before, before his. Uh, involuntary hiatus and so we just went in and came up with new material for the, for that joint project and even the mixtape thing was like some of them beats just moved me at the time or I just kind of felt like it I was thinking about the first four of my falls and where I was of just the jacking for beats the giving like day in the life uh vlog slash music video overlap kind of thing and when I was really first figuring out how to market myself, how to put, push myself out there, like, with the YouTube and all like that. And I'm like, I, I wasn't really in a space of putting together a full length or a concept album, but I just felt like rapping. I did those songs in a day or so. But past that, now nah, really, a few of these songs off Love Drug, the album, have been put together or the framework of them over the course of that time. There was a couple of songs that I probably started on two, three years ago, hmm. but it was just an idea. It was just like a sketch, if you will. And as I started making other songs, or as I started to like crystallize an actual like concept, I was like, okay, I, I need to finish that song. Like that's hard and it don't sound dated. It don't sound old. Like the hmm. concept is there. I just need to finish the record, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the song, I ain't gonna lie, I started it uh maybe 2021 hmm. i was the things i'm talking about in the first verse would, had just happened and i wrote about it I, I wrote a verse about it about you know uh almost just losing my mind to covid etc and i just kind of left it there the song was just on my hard drive that wasn't like that was just what i wrote that day it was like two years later my dad dealt with a situation and um as I couldn't even go to the hospital with my mom. That was one part of it, just the, that's where COVID was. That's, that was the policies of hospitals and otherwise. So as I was in the hospital visiting my dad, it was like, it was like a almost polar opposite, it's a similar thing I'm going through, but the way I had to take it in was different because I was this far away from, you know, somebody on ventilators and, and all that. and. Then um, maybe a month or so past that, I found myself in the hospital from a panic attack. Hmm. And so the second verse kind of wrote itself. And it was, like I said, it was two years apart. And that's, you know, even art imitates life. Just, you know, that was a, a big theme of the project was transparency and whatever else. Like, uh, but in terms of the record, like, I don't think short of me telling you that, you probably wouldn't think or know that those verses weren't written or recorded the same day. Yeah. You know, 
but uh, so I was I was making music to, to answer the question. Okay. I, I was trying to. It just didn't always come so easy. And I'm I'm a person that's always had a passion for this. I've never really had to try that hard. It's like the music almost meets me halfway, or I'm moved by the production, or I'm moved by a thought, or idea, or concept, or feeling. And that just wasn't happening. And like even putting that to whom and make a sign piece out there was, yeah, I was explaining the time and distance that, that I had between releasing music, but also trying to kind of explain the premise of the album, the concept of the album, some of the motifs and themes of it, you know, picking up from where I left off on the last one. And, um, you know, just humanizing like my myself within my artistry because it is a large, large majority percentage of my music that is like very, very true to life. Like um, I remember the a quote of like I don't Starlito doesn't rap about a million. He didn't pull up in a million Lamborghinis and and I mean that's that's real. Like. I'm just kind of giving it to you as it is, and so to force that would be almost like weird, hmm. or to I, I feel like I'd be cheating myself to approach it any other way. And I just wanted it was almost a disclaimer as much as hmm. as an explanation, because uh, if you're looking for the soundtrack or what what you might want to pull up to the club listening to this might not be it you know I've, I've seen a bunch of people tell me that they cried to this album and it's been out three four days and I mean I, I do think the best artists thought-provoking or emotive or you know I think laugh cry if I can make you do one of those things or some combination of all those things and I say it was effective yeah you know how does that make you feel when you get those type of messages when people hit you and say like either your music moved them mm. or even helped them get through a very difficult situation that they were facing it's it's a it's a mixed emotion kind of thing sometimes i feel proud accomplished like if it's on a help end or or move them inspired or, and then some of the times like it's a, it can be a little saddening almost that somebody may share some commonality with some of the pain or some of the, the struggle or some of the lowest points of dark, the darkness that's there. Cause you know, um, but it's also like, like I said, it's just humanity is, it's, it's real life. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can empathize like in some of those stories, like, I did an extended meet and greet before the show. Like I bowled with a few fans and invited some fans that, that upgraded their tickets to sound check with us and just kind of hung out for a minute. And so I got to like have like real conversations. It wasn't just snap a picture, sign yeah. something and keep it pushing. And you know, people were sharing sharing those those stories or the, I mean, people send me those messages. I, I get them in, in uh, DMs and all like that and it's like, like I said, it's kind of, you know, it's it's mixed. It's all over the place. It's like sometimes it, I might get a laugh. I want, you know, I, I might it might make my day. I might be charmed even by the appeal that my music has for some. And then sometimes it's like, damn, like, cause some of the things I'm venting or I'm I'm this is my purging, getting over it, leaving it where it is, just acknowledging it. And this is the music is a stepping stone for me. Some people are going through that stuff in real time. Or, you know, if I'm I'm talking about bouts with grief, I'm talking about losing loved ones and homies and losing friends and otherwise. And then somebody like, yeah, my my brother just passed 10 days ago. Or it's like, damn. Or it's like, man, I'm glad you dropped this. You and my cousin had the same birthday and he got killed. And it's like, shit, like, you know, there's the silver lining you appreciate it or you're thanking me or whatever but i'm like i then i'm kind of like damn is my music tethered to your your pain or the, mm. the worst of your memories or even like not that there's a buzz kill just like just gravity i guess but i also feel like 
my brand is is making like real music for real people. So, you know, you take it all just the same, take it in stride. And, and I think a lot of it keeps me balanced, keeps me level or aware that I don't have to do the sensational stuff. I don't have to create, make myself a spectacle in order to be heard or, or received or whatever. Like, I'm just give it to you as it is. No, that, there's, there's an audience for that too. Yeah. You know? yeah, how therapeutic was it for yourself to record this album? Because, I mean, your music's always been very personal and very vulnerable, but I feel like we kind of stepped it up a little bit on this one. Huh? Um, man, it's, not, it's necessary. It's necessary. Like, that. there's a a layer of it that's pure therapy from, from myself, like, admittedly. And as an artist, I think the, the last level or the the biggest step of, of the whole therapeutic process of it is the release, is sharing it. It's like, cause like I said, I got a few other songs. I got some songs that maybe dig a little deeper. Hmm. And I'm like, or I probably fought with myself with a couple of these songs, like, do I want to put this out? But um, I find myself telling my daughter all the time, like, be brave, be brave, you know, encourage, encouraging her to like face her fears or it, go through it and at least know what it, you know, know what that feels like before you just like apprehensive or, or running from it. And that's that's part of it too. It's like, man, I shared this. Like, I don't really, what shame could I have? Like, y'all heard it from me. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? The highs, lows, best and worst. Like, whether I'm popping it and braggadocious or I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm broken. I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm going through it, or I've been through it, like, I ain't better than you, kind of thing, or, you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah, it's like one of your lyrics, I can't remember what song, but it's like, you can't expose me if I keep it real, you know? Yeah. Shake back. Shake back, that's Yeah, right. you keep that's it real right. with yourself, they can't expose you. Yeah. Like, what's, what's to expose? Like, anything you could say about me, I could probably say it about myself first, you know, the, like the, Eminem or Eight Mile kind of thing when he flipped it. Like, I know, I know what you're going to say about me kind of thing. And yeah. it's like, damn, you know. Kind of had already won at that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, just looking back at yourself, uh, Lito, like, how proud of yourself are you? How far you've come in your life? Mm. I'm, I feel accomplished. As they say, pride comes before the fall. So I try not to get too, too full of myself in 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 the sense of a pride. But in full honesty, I know it could have like been over. I could have been peaked, and you know, not been in a position to still achieve and accomplish, or just survive or remain like viable within this whole realm of music and otherwise personally, professionally. So I, there is a like a, you know, to be able to make my people proud is like, I, I think I take more pride in that than, than any like self, you know, self acclaim or, or propping myself up. Uh, and I, you were asking about like this weekend, like that was a lot of that, mm. you know, that was a lot of that. Mm. Uh, my mom, my dad were at the show, you know what I'm saying? My, uh, I had no siblings, but a few of my first cousins were there and a lot of my childhood friends, longtime friends, like my, my green room, dressing room was like a damn family reunion kind of thing. <laughs> And it was really cool to look around and, and say, man, a lot of these people have been here the entire 20 year journey of, you know what I'm saying, me being a public figure or me putting my music out there. And uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I'm still at it. That's, that's for sure. I know I, I kind of played the cut for a while and probably retirement rumors and, and otherwise, but I'm, I'm proud to still still be doing it. I think I'm, if anything, I'm most proud of, of 
being able to do it my way and whatever whatever comes with that is you know that's that yeah um i do want to dive into a couple of these songs um oh good i'm here last time uh this okay. is a a very personal song for you um before we get to the third verse about Dolph, um can you share about like who the first two verses were about i just talked to a good friend about this they asked me about people specifically the first two verses first of all like the the record was directly inspired by a fabulous record uh called can you hear me i think it's called can you hear me with a little mo and uh he started the first verse with a tupac lyric he started the second verse with a biggie lyric he started the third verse with a big pun lyric i think the song came out on like oh four something like that so you know a few years past all those artists passing and uh it was like three stories the i don't believe the verses were about the artist it was just you know it kind of gave him a launching pad for for the storyboard or whatever and so i i borrowed that concept and i started the first verse with a bankroll fresh lyric i actually started and ended each verse with lyrics from these artists but i started and ended the first verse with bankroll fresh lyrics i started this and ended the second verse with nipsey hustle lyrics and i started and ended the third verse with young Dolph lyrics the first two verses uh candidly are about several people mm. like there are details sprinkled within like um and because those people are not like public figures like like young Dolph was is i i don't want to fully disclose like all the the you know people and stories between but in both of the first two verses they were about several situations and I just wove them into you know a storyboard similar to, to Fab's the a lot of the details were like entirely spot on mm -hmm. I just may have jumped from one story interaction with one person to the next person and you know in some of those cases like a couple of those people maybe passed over the last two years couple of them passed over a decade ago, but they were all like people that, you know, I had interactions with, or people that I rock with. And I kind of was just tracing the last times that I saw them, the last times that I was around them, because that that's, that's what I feel like we, that's a big element of grief. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like regret, or we, you know, what could I have done different? What could I have said? You know, uh, I remember, T.I. still can't forget myself record. It's like, I always feel I could have done more, said more. Why my partner's gotta be dead or in the feds for like, and that like, that's like a overarching like theme of feeling. And even the, you know, the chorus from Robin right now, which I feel like she she killed it. I mean, we was, I was, had chill bumps when we were in the studio putting it together, you know, writing it. She, she, uh, she said one line, I was like, nah, that last time part, like that's, that's the name of the song. You know, we were just working on, we had a cadence and was working backwards with the words. And she said something about the last time. And I was like, nah, we need to last time. Like, like that's that's it, you know, because some of my closest friends that I lost, like, I replayed it over and over. Like, the last time I saw them, like, I, f I felt something off. I felt something different. Like, and I'm like, you good, bro? And we probably left it there. Whereas I'm, you know, I'm probably stuck feeling like, damn, I wish I could have, I wish I could have tried to scratch the surface of what was eating at them. You know what I'm saying? Because the next, you know, the next call, a few days later, a week later, it's like they gone. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it was several people. You know, the first, the first verse, the centerpiece of it was like gun violence or envy to come with the street life you know coming up sometimes is what brings you down you know I, I say it like directly of like these are niggas killing for nothing when they don't have nothing like that's that's real that's the reality of it like it's happening every day it's been happening 
You know what I'm saying? It's been happening to people I know, people around me, for as long as I've been off the porch, you know. And the second verse, I kind of touch on the, the um, like opioid epidemic or, you know, people overdosing. And, and um, as a lyric, I was like, uh, and they say it come in threes, and I done seen this twice. Cause it's like, I lost two close friends in a short amount of time to the, the same thing. And, um, but I, I, I made sure to like acknowledge that like one person's demons or is not really any different or better or worse than anybody else's. You know what I'm saying? I dealt with, I dealt with drug abuse. I dealt with addiction in his own forms. Opi opioid abuse uh, in different forms, if you want to be technical about it. Like, I had a syrup bottle on, on one of my mixtape covers. Like, that may have been 10 years ago, and I, I for sure probably feel differently about some of that stuff or in a different place with it all. But once upon a time, I'd argue I was probably getting higher than, than some people have been to, to overdose. Because now, even um, if you look at the album cover, it's a pill broken, and if you look close, it's a silhouette of a shoe print. Mm -hmm. And that's to imply, like, the drugs are stepped on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, love drug, and, like, it ain't pure. Like, a lot of the love out here ain't pure, but the drugs for sure aren't. And, you know, so for someone to overdose, it's not necessarily that they, like, doing a a crazy amount of drugs. Yeah, it could you just, could just be take, not, yeah, yeah, you could take a piece of something. You could mm -hmm. take one of something and it's just not what it's supposed to be. It's cut with this, mixed with the wrong thing and you know, and you're out of here. And so, you know, I'm, uh, I, I was just like, I took specific elements of conversations, relationships, experiences, like some of that stuff happened exactly like that. The last time I saw this person, they was trying to get me to sneak the what's the name in, in a, you know what I'm saying, in a spot where the what's the name ain't supposed to be in there. And, but they were living like that, you know what I'm saying? And and I knew that. And it was just like, I didn't even think about it because I want them to be able to make it up out of here. You know, in that time and space, I probably wasn't as endangered or, you know, um, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but I just, I knew they weren't asking me to do that for nothing kind of thing. I, I didn't feel like they was gonna go up in here and shoot up the party. Mm -hmm. Just like, I gotta make it back to the car. And that was the last time I saw her from them. And you know, they got, they got gunned down like three, four days after that. And I'm just like, even stuff like, you know, I probably was, this is probably Grey Goose days, you know the time the timeline of it but to back it up in that same verse i'm probably yeah i mean I'm, i spared the specifics but it's yeah i'm like i said i sprinkled things from several several different people there's maybe six 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 or seven different people i'm talking about in the first two verses okay. whereas like you you say you're gonna get to the third verse yeah. so that was like very like linear you know what I'm saying, and, and direct a tribute or homage, dedication, you know, all those things. But. No, I got you. So then the, the final verse about Young Dolph, um, was that something you had written recently? Was that something you had written a while ago? Or? Man, I wrote and recorded that verse. I didn't realize it until I, w I was recording it. I wrote and recorded that verse on the the two year anniversary uh, of the day bro passed. And I don't know if it's some cosmic intervention, you know, I don't even fully believe in time like that. I think time is an illusion, but that's just how it happened. That's not when I recorded the song. I had, I recorded the first two verses and the chorus with Robin the same night, maybe three weeks before that. And I just rode around listening to the first two verses for like three weeks. I knew what I want, where I want to go with the third verse, but I couldn't get the words together. Hmm. I was like, 
you know, we were talking about a minute ago, like I was stuck and torn between do I want to peel back these layers? How much do I want to share? Because the first two verses, although I was talking about real situations and real people, I feel like I did it artistically, where it wasn't that I was talking about this person specifically or this one thing. I was just painting a picture. In order for me to talk about bro directly, admittedly, I was kind of stuck and torn. I, the, my biggest fear was it to come across like exploitive. Like, I don't know if you would have noticed this, but I never really posted or shared anything, you know, in real time with like him passing and otherwise. Yeah, I think there was just one mention on a Don Tripp song where uh, right, you had mentioned right, right. his passing, and that was it. I yeah, think. yeah, I was, I, I did, because you know we were out, we were out tight, um, and even then, like I wasn't making music, I wasn't putting out my own music, and you know Tripp's doing all this music, and I'm like. It, you know, I, I did put it in that verse, but I'm saying like, you know, like I don't do the posting things, sharing things on social media, because a lot of times, to me, it, it like reeks of uh, attention seeking, you know? And I'm not saying that everybody that does that, that's what they're doing it for, but a lot of times it is that, you know, it, it make me feel like, man, something happened to me, people gonna find they gonna find that picture they took with me eight years ago just to act like we was best friends and and um pour it all out and hoping of getting the most engagement they got off a of post before kind of thing because because that's what I see some of it is for sure or you know like uh and I just didn't want to for sure in real time I just couldn't get caught up because every time I would see it, even if it was true even if it was truly genuine and and whatever somebody was sharing even seeing that was like taking me to even a lower place. So I'm like, I don't want to, sharing that ain't going to make me feel no better. You know what I'm saying? And I probably got tens of pictures of us together, studio sessions, we shot videos together and, you know, gang of shows and otherwise. And I'm like, I probably looked at the pictures and, you know, reminiscing and otherwise, but I'm like, man, sharing this for social media sake or whatever is like, it seems or feels too self-serving, cause it, and it for sure is not gonna make me feel better. And so I was, I was torn when I was riding around listening to the first two verses. I was like, man, the last thing I want to do is come across as similar to the things or the or the way of the world that I like really don't like or appreciate. I don't want it to to be to even appear exploitive, you know. And uh, I don't know what, something just moved me like, you know, this is how you feel and this is what it is. And however somebody else take it, that's on them. Like, you know what's real, you know what's in your heart. And the words kind of, damn, they wrote themselves, you know. And I, I sat at the house and, and I put it together like relatively fast. I, I just know I was on the way like out of the house and I was like kind of freestyling on myself and um, when I wrapped it up I zipped the file up and sent it to my engineer and when I got like to the bottom of the steps about to like leave the house I something on my phone I don't know if it was a it was a blog or something that you know mentioned it was an anniversary and I was like kind of just froze like man what the hell like how crazy is that? Like, I, you know, the the date or the timestamp of that's actually I recorded that separate from the rest of the song, but it was actually on that day, which it wasn't. Truthfully, it wasn't nothing to feel good about, but that's just like I don't really believe in coincidence either. So I was like, I don't know if that's why I was moved or felt compelled to finish the record or put that together, but unlike the first two verses, it was very like direct, you know what I'm saying? It was what it was. And and even still, I mean you just the context clues or the like um I I put an ad lib at the end of the song. It was an ad lib lifted from one of the other records we had done over the years, probably Don't Do It or or uh, 
one of those, I'm over the Houston records or something like that. Um, you know, I just mentioned some memories, experiences, some song titles sprinkled in, like, that was my guy. Like, yeah, but, but I mean, knowing that I for sure knew it was a lot of people, even at a distance, that felt like I felt. You know what I'm saying? So I, I have seen the feedback of that been overwhelmingly like, man, like you said it. You know, you said what I what I couldn't say, or you said how, how I felt. You know. And yeah, you even mentioned the song like his passing kind of made you feel like you didn't want to be a rapper anymore. At all. At all. Like that was. It was a, I know exactly where I was. I know exactly where I was when all three of the artists from the song whose lyrics that I borrowed from, I know exactly where I was when I got the notes. Like, you know, it just, but I know in that moment, it was a different level of gravity. Like, I, I knew, I, I met Bankroll Fresh. We talked on the phone a few times. We, Met him, you know what I'm saying, in passing in person a couple times. I didn't I didn't really know Nipsey Hussle at all. Like I I felt like we had some commonality. It was you know, and I definitely like rocked with his his push and liked him as an artist and, and all that. But like with Dolph, like we've been in the car together, you know what I'm saying? We spend like extended time around each other, like not to mention we how long ago we started like working. You know, this music thing is what put us in the same space and going back to like 2011. So it was very much like watching somebody come up and you know what I'm saying, how, how things ended up happening like 10 years later. It's like, man, what is, what's the, at, in the moment I was like, what's the upside to all this? And, um, I mean, I've been in, in spaces where I felt like I endangered myself by casting myself out there as a public figure. Or I had issues that, you know what I'm saying, came with all this and the ever-present aura of danger. Just, you know, some of it's environmental, or some of it's cultural, just on a, you know, hip hop level, street, et cetera. But it just, yeah, I for sure was like, man, what, uh, I ain't into this. I'm just not into this at all anymore. Like, and I think a lot of my inspiration went with it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you even mentioned in the letter, like, how you were not happy with what, like, rap is representing these days or what it has become. Uh, yeah, I, I ain't a, I'm not a fan of, of a lot of what it represents and and that's okay too because it ain't about appeasing me or rap right, making me happy i don't listen to as much of it and I, I don't have as much free time and space to listen to it because i don't want i don't want rap music to raise my kid in the way that it might have raised me if like just being real so we listening to we listen to the troll soundtrack <laughs> Right now, that's you know what I'm saying. That's what's probably got the the most plays in my ride, and, and you know, also not just for that reason. Just a lot of it, I feel like ain't for me either. You know, the vast majority of even my music, I don't feel like it's for her. You know, but a lot of a lot of it, and that's okay too, because it is some it is some rap out there that's for me. It just might might be some of the music that I came up on, or it might be some artists that that perspective has shifted more to like how I'm living or you know what I'm saying or the way I feel or what I'm on like um but that I'm not like bitter or you know what I'm saying upset at, at where others are taking it because times change the game changes and I think it's important to be adaptive it's just I think it's important as an artist for me to seek out and find them pockets and them spaces of inspiration that you know makes sense to me and for me and not like because i'm for sure not chasing the light i'm not chasing you know what i'm saying what's what's for whoever over there is for them you know truthfully the, the business of, of it is is it's more lucrative than it's ever been so 
if that means you gotta do what you gotta do to, you know what I'm saying, to make it make it happen for you, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Like that don't mean I I had to do that. But this ain't the first time I felt like that. I came in the game on the tail end of the Crunk era. And I made a record that was relatively successful in that space. I I was off that, like almost instantly. Hmm. But I was in a situation that I almost demanded that of me or was asking that of me. And I was in a space of like, man, I don't, you know, that ain't what flowed my boat. And uh, you know, it was a little bit of tug of war, one foot in, one foot out of, of you know, appeasing your your business interests and and then doing what you wanna do or what you know what I'm saying, what you driven to do or your passion the passion of it. I was damn near a battle rapper, a punchline rapper, before I slip up and make a, a club banger. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like I don't really care about making the club music. I mean, if I make one of those, cool, because that was down there accident anyway. But along the way, as life start to get realer, you living faster, you you becoming this, what you set out to be, and so people treating you different, looking at you different. It's like, I, at a point, I almost felt like the world was becoming smaller by virtue of like, me being able to go farther and see more. And that started coming out in the music. And I'm like, a label might not see that as commercially viable as, as a perspective, you know, because it, it's always been said, like, labels want to keep artists in the dark and they would prefer the artists to be dumb as hell and just, you know what I'm saying, uh, fulfill or move with, with uh, their agendas, even. So... I've always kind of been in the know that, like, man, you could, like, just play by a certain set of rules and you probably go farther faster, but I ain't racing, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really care about how far this shit go. I'm, you know, I'm going to try to take it as far as I can take it, but I'm going to be on my time and my terms. So, yeah, I mean, you, I didn't mean to get away from the, the question, but, like, I ain't, uh, I ain't tripping on on what else is out there. Mm -hmm. Cause it's some ignorant shit out there that I love. <laughs> so it ain't as cut and dry as like a certain type, but I like I like things that I can that I perceive to be like pure or to be raw. Or like when I get that feeling like this is what this is that. Some things be made up, it be costume. It's like somebody's really like in wardrobe and in character to perpetuate these things as normal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, ain't nothing normal about that shit. But it, as we making it normal is abnormal to me. I'm like, and that's the truth is like, shit, I talk about some shit that shouldn't be normal, but it, it might, it might be, you know what I'm saying? And, and from my vantage point, and it's like, maybe me talking about it, Maybe I plant a seed to change some of the shit or change somebody's mind. Like when you know, when I say that like these young niggas killing for nothing, they don't have nothing like so many, you know, trying to earn a strike so they can rep on you, like that's the law of the land. Like, you know, the generation behind me it seemed like they don't even want the money. That you know, they want the they want the prestige, they want the acclaim for being like the goon. And I like that, and I'm like, that's crazy to me. <laughs> no, that's you know real. What I'm saying like that's usually only going to end up in two places with that type of. I, it ain't usually like that's just what it is. But, but I'm saying like, I won't even call it a generational divide. It's like culture clash. Like, at some point, something changes to make it that way. There was an era when all the big music was about getting the money. You know what I'm saying? And it started to transform into something else. It started to turn into all the music was about getting high. And it was like all the music is about killing. Like, I don't, you could argue that even some of the get money stuff may have been a little bit destructive or self-destructive because what it perpetuated to get it. But overall, like somebody in the corporate world could probably listen to, you know, some old get money music and want to go apply that and take it, you know what I'm saying, on mm -hmm. the 
on the up and up on the legal tip. It's just, you know, themes. I don't know what some of this other stuff could lead you to other than, you know. So when I say, when I make a record like Put the Gun Down, Craig, who, who the hell am I to tell you not to protect yourself or to tell you to not be on go or to stay, not to stay dangerous in an environment where, where all that is, is prevalent. You know what I'm saying? I walk out the door knowing like, this could go any which way. You know what I'm saying? I'm on it. That's my mindset, because it's environmental. But what I can tell you is like, man, when you, when you cross that line or when you take it there, like, it's already too far. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't have to, Maybe you wouldn't want to, you know what I'm saying? Rather than telling you the opposite or like, go, go. Like, you know, so one of my favorite rappers growing up was Mac, No Limit. And, and shout out to him, he, he just uh, came back home not that long ago. And I mean, I watched everything that, that I could find of him talking, you know what I'm saying, since he's been out. And I think his case was crazy, you know what I'm saying? How they how they did them and, and otherwise. But then, you know, even him to like almost take accountability of like what he's putting out there, like probably his biggest song, Murder, Murder, Kill, Kill. And, you know, it was just undertone. It was it was perception as reality. Like, let's spin that, play it in court, or label you as this brand. Like, dude was a poet, you know what I'm saying? Was, and, and even, that was the theme. They whole label was, soldiered out, you know what I'm saying? That was like a marching thing, like, it, you know, like he was a real rapper, you know what I'm saying? But like, even him having a pistol in a party, like that shit is environmental. But to me, that that whole shit was a cautionary tale, you know what I'm saying, looking back. And I, I hate that it, you know what I'm saying, probably took the prime of his career and his life with it and his freedom, but you know, I, here and now, like where I am, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, I just look at it like, man, we gotta, well, I ain't gonna say we, cause I really don't speak with myself. I got a responsibility. I got a personal responsibility, a moral responsibility, like, and I don't feel like I'm out of touch or I can't talk about whatever, but I just wanna talk about it in a way that's, you know, I said some of them things in the way I put it, I hope it's somebody that's still, you know, got a potential to for redemption, you know, or to or to see better, think better, do better from it. Like that's that's kind of my resolve. That's why that's why I find like some some sense of like uh, peace or purpose in what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I was, yeah, I, it just gets tricky because, you know, these people grow up, they grow up in this type of environment. This is yeah. all they see all the time. They're conditioned this way. So it's like, it gets real hard to kind of change that perspective on people, too. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't think it's my job to, to I don't feel like it's, it's my job or my plight to change anybody's perspective. But I don't want to limit uh, myself, or I don't want to, I love to be able to, if if I can, if somebody like, I for sure struggle with the idea that if I made somebody want to go pick up a cup of syrup, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't my job to influence that, and I might have, so the same way, like, yeah, uh, I can do the opposite too, <laughs> like, what you know, and and I ain't, it don't make me a sucker to, to acknowledge, like, Man, I don't really just don't think that shit cool. Like I ain't my even during like my time away, I think for a minute I struggle with like I don't wanna be on some like talking down to nobody or like no holier than now or on a soapbox like preachy kind of thing. But I'm like, nah, it's just shit, this just it's just my story. This this the way I can I can tell you wholeheartedly that I don't think that shit cool because I did it. I ain't saying it like judging you. If anything, I'm judging myself. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm trying to let you know in in case that might be enough for you to say, oh, okay, well I ain't gotta do that. Cause 
this this is like what I'm saying. I when I seen somebody like get railroaded because powers that be don't like your influence. You know what I'm saying? Or because you from that and you of that, if you just halfway look the part or look guilty, uh, you don't even get the benefit of doubt. Like and shit, I I've been close to you know, similar similar situations even, you know. Different, you know, different context, but that should be for real. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for advances in technology and shit. Or, you know, but anyway, <laughs> um, let, let's go back to put the put the gun down, Craig. Mm -hmm. uh, were you and Trip in the studio together when you recorded that? Nah. So and what's your reaction when he sends you this, what is two minute man, verse? He ain't even send it. That's what was crazy. That's why I, I know we went like the majority of the records we do, all the Step Brothers records we do, every album we've been in the in the same room mm -hmm. for every every Step Brothers song. It's like a little known fact. Like, even though we're from different cities, I actually saw Brothers Morning. Like but but uh we do all our Step Brothers collaborative records together. Then we have deadlines a lot of times for our solo projects and it's like so we you know we'll send it back and forth, whatever we gotta do. Um with this song, I sent the song, I sent my first verse to the producer, to Sheffrey Kitchen. Okay. And he did almost half the album. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my guy. I killed it too. But I sent uh Chef was like, hey, let me know which beats, because he sends me a lot of music, you know. He was, I can say, I, I credit Chef as one of the people that, that's why he's on six records on the album, because he, like, religiously, like, bro, what you working? I'm about to send you some more beats. I'm Like, even, if, I don't even text back a lot of times. He's like, <laughs> next week, like, here go five more beats, check your email, like, hey, you drop on any of those? Almost to a point of, like, I probably feel guilty, like, damn, I'm really not working. Like, brother sent me 20 beats and they hard. And so it was one of them, like, you drop on any of the beats, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna send you the ones I dropped on, you know, so make sure you don't sell them to somebody. Or if you have already done some business so I can, you know what I'm saying, we can adjust or whatever. And I sent them like three, four songs, because I, I think I did some more records with Chef that, that we didn't use, but I sent them like, uh, retire my jersey. I sent him a couple of songs, whatever I'd done at the time, like making sure the beats were still available. And I had a show in Memphis, and I called Shell. Was like, man, I'm gonna pull up to your studio. I'm gonna get to the city early. I'm gonna pull up on you. Come holler at you before I uh, before I do the show. I actually was pulling up to uh, work with Eddie Valero. Okay. And um, and Shell was like, man, I'll let you hear something. Or he was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to let you hear it or not or something. And he'd start playing a song, and I'm looking like, that's my song. Like, what you talking about? <laughs> and my verse go off, and Trip come in, and I'm like, like, I ain't even asked Trip to get on the song. Oh, really? like, he just, I think, overheard it with Chef and just jumped on there. And like you said, rap for two minutes, bit my head <laughs> off on the song. Like, But I was, uh, you know, that's our relationship, too, is like, bro, kind of silly and spontaneous. And, and I for sure didn't mind. Especially, like, I felt like he uh, he added another element to it. Uh, bro, like, my favorite rapper. Like, my favorite rapper right now, for sure. And, um, and then we call each other Craig, too. So, you know, the inside inside joke of, of that. And Was that sound bite already on there when mm, you sent it to Sheffrey? The, um... At the beginning? The Friday yeah, sound yeah. It was it was at the beginning, and I'm... I think it was after my verse too. Okay. If I can remember. But I, I know I heard it and was like, man, what? Like, what is this? Like, because <laughs> I wasn't in, in album mode. I wasn't in putting a project together mode at that time. So I wasn't at a point of like reaching out for features or any of that. So I was like, I kind of have to sit up straight on my chair, like, okay. He did it again. It, you know, every time I rap first or he gets the, you know what I'm saying? gets the drop on me as far as what the song is on. He always take it somewhere <laughs> else and, and, or, you know, steal the show. And I'm okay with that too, cause it ain't, it ain't such a competitive space. Like if as long as it make the song better, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. You know? 
Did you know he was going to drop this many projects this year? Uh, we talked about it early in the year, maybe after the second or third one, and he told me that he was. I didn't doubt him, but I didn't necessarily like, believe it just because I was like, is that, is that feasible? Like, <laughs> is it, you know, tangible, especially at that high level? Because he dropped the album like last fall. He dropped the Christopher season two. Mm -hmm. And um, I had just looked at what I posted about it because I thought it was incredible. I thought it was a very, very like well put together like body of work. At that time, I was like, man, this is one of my favorite Don Tripp projects. And I've been a fan of his music at that time, like 10, 12 years, 12 years, something like that. I was like, man, this is like one of my favorite solo projects. I thought that was hard. So when he came back in January, I was already like, damn, like, you know, cause Tripp had some, some breaks. He had some longer spaces of, of releasing music. During that time when I was putting out five and six projects, four or five, six projects a year, he might not be releasing as much solo music, you know, in between a couple of Step Brothers and et cetera. So when he came right back in January, I already was like, damn. And then that project was hard. And, um, and then he did another one in February. I think I was on the one in January, but I was like, he was telling me he was getting ready to drop the one in March. I was like, you gonna drop, what, what you got going on? You know what I'm saying? Doing this every month, and as he uh, started telling me his, his game plan with it, I was like, that's what's up, you know? Around that time, I was telling him like, man, this is, that's cool, but you're putting a lot of pressure on me, because every time you drop, <laughs> Then my inbox, my mentions, comments, etc. is, man, when you gonna drop? This is this four projects from Trip in six months. And, but at least and, we were getting verses from you on every yeah, other and, one, and, basically. And I'm featured on it as I'm sharing his project, you know, just trying to help promote it, or you know, like, hey, I'm on this one twice. Like, yeah, that's cool, but <laughs> what you doing? I'm like, bro, you making me look like lazy, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like. Like, I, I'm inept or something, like, because you, you know, he was coming with, he was delivering. So we, you know, we kind of was laughing about it behind the scenes. I was like, well, look, if you, uh, it kind of was early on, like, if you keep this going, I'm going to be forced to drop something by my birthday if you really do it every month. But the part I was most impressed by, now that he's, like, delivered, is he started with a clean slate every mm -hmm. month. Like, I mean, he said it, and we talked on camera about it recently, but I just dropped my project on the 15th on my birthday. It, he dropped it on the 22nd, he was like, man, I got one song. <laughs> that was like <laughs> a few days ago. I'm like, you about to drop a full length, and you only got one song, so I'm supposed to be helping out. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'm on there a time or two. but. That's the most impressive part is that he's starting like from scratch. And I talked to him a few months back. I called him random. It was like, bro, how are you doing this? What are you tapping into to be able to deliver like this over and over? Because it's working on working on a deadline. I mean, it sometimes it can make it easier, but it also sometimes can water the, water the product mm -hmm. down. It's like, all right, I can I can give you ten songs tomorrow, but it might be. ABC one two three, ABC one two three, just you know, for the sake of doing it. I don't think I can give you love drug tomorrow and for showing five six days necessary. Like it took three and a half years of living, you know, plus to you know congeal into that. So, but yeah, dude is definitely for sure one of the one of the greatest writers and rappers of, of our time of our, our generation, damn near any, and um, yeah, and I think all these projects is showcasing that to uh, people who may have been sleeping on it, because now they're paying attention, they're like, damn, every yeah. project he's going in on this. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah, that's, but um, that, that, that feature was a surprise, <laughs> and I wasn't, uh, wasn't aware that it was done. I don't know if Chef was supposed to play it for me right then, but we actually had that show I was going to do, I think we were doing it together. And uh, so when I saw him, I was like, I heard what you did to my song kind of thing. He just bust out laughing like, you know, 
But that was cool, because I probably would have never put a second verse on it, <laughs> to be honest with you. You just so, would have left it with the one verse? Or? or not put it out. Really? Okay. You know, even worse than that. So that was, <laughs> that was a, you know, another thing cosmically that just kind of things happen how they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, let, let's talk about the no cap features. Okay. Uh, wh- what was what was that studio session like? You recorded both of those to the same night? Nah, nah. We recorded one. In, uh, I was in Mobile for for a show, and uh, I pulled up on Bro, and we did the Pocket Full of Pain, and then the second one he was in Nashville for a show, for his show, and um, you know what I'm saying got out with him and went to studio I recorded and did so we did one in Mobile and did one in Nashville. Okay. Kind of so like, Don't Cry was done in uh Nashville. Don't Don't Cry was done in that we did a few more songs that night too. Oh okay. We, yeah. We uh yeah, we did one in Mobile, one in Nashville. A little bit of time in between both of those as well. And they just you know, they both fit the the soundscape or uh or, or what I was doing like we kind of met in the middle of, uh, of each other's brand of music, mm-hmm. I guess. And that's a cool thing, because we damn that generational part. You know what I'm saying? Bro told me in the studio, man, I've been listening to you since seventh grade. And it, I went in and it made me feel old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but then on, on the other side, like, it was cool, because I had to think to think about what was I listening to in seventh grade, or what artist was I listening to. And I've done, some songs with some of those people, you know what I'm saying? I've I done a record with Squadface, I've done a record with A-Bob, and, you know, I'm like, so when I comparatively looked at it like that, it was like, I can dig it, you know what I'm saying? And as much as anything, like, if I'm, uh, if I'm viable enough for somebody, you know what I'm saying, we probably 13, 14 years apart in age, for somebody to wanna work with me, you know what I'm saying? Because he got a cool thing going, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? A nice buzz and what he built up for itself. You know, between other artists, uh, uh, I guess you could say a different generation or, you know, spans of decades at least. Like, that's, a lot of artists don't make it a decade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So especially somebody more than that, their career started that much longer after yours. To, to care to work with you or want to work with you or to have that kind of chemistry with or whatever, like, that shit to me is, um, it says something about both parties too. Because a lot of, a lot of older artists tend to be out of touch or out of the loop or for lack of being able to put it a better way, can't keep up a lot of times. And a lot of younger artists will look at more seasoned or other artists is washed or I ain't on what they own or we don't got nothing in common to you know what I'm saying what the hell we gonna talk about on the song mm-hmm. and so like that meeting in the middle I think is, is kind of like it's cool you know what I'm saying um, and yeah, I love both of them records yeah. like I said we got a, we got a couple more that's uh are you sitting on those or are those for his album or you guys haven't decided yet Man, we're just doing doing the music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're just doing music. And that that's another thing, like like you sometimes you cross paths with people, you work with people, and the work kinda all the rest of it is kinda secondary. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I can I can say I, I what I perceive is that bro has a real passion for what he what he does and I like that, I admire that. And like I said, for me, Putting the music out, sharing it, is as important as any other part of it. So we'll figure out something to do with it. Okay. You know, it's sometimes you got to figure it out, however that go. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's that was uh, maybe another thing that helped. That was a catalyst. You know, that was similar. Like me and Dolph, we just would do music whenever we was at the same place at the same time. We would just make the music, we'll figure out where it's gonna land later. Or it might be, hey, I'm working on this. I need you to put a verse on here. Or, man, I got this song I think it'll sound good on. I remember even, um, I think it was, I think it was Black Sheep Don't Grin. I was like, bro, I'm a, 
want to get you on my album. I can't really pick which one of these songs. What's between two songs? He was like, man, send both of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and I looked at it like, okay, well, that's cool. So you can choose between yeah. the two. No, nah, he did and both. Shit, he sent both of them back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A couple hours. I, I would think I was in Vegas. I'm, I'm looking at the email. I'm like, it's two different emails. Like, and he smashed both of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it was like certain people, like, I think that's a, when you enjoy, like, the, when the collaboration makes sense and you bring the, the best out of each other or, you know, that's that's kind of the cool thing. Like, I mean, the two No Cap records, like, he did the choruses on both. Mm -hmm. And I think the melodic aspect or, you know, he there's a lot of metaphors and, and things and, and it's just like it just kind of makes sense. Like it's a layup for me at that point. I, was like, I just got to rap. I got to oh, yeah. <laughs> fill in the blank, connect the dots of it all. And and it's you know it's saying something too though. There's some pain to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's some some soul. It's like bluesy almost. And that's a cool thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like them elements ain't getting lost in the sauce as as times change. Like certain things, like be it like lyrically or. Um, Musically, like certain things that that move forward with it, cause and um, same like when I work with Robin right now, like she can do things musically that I can't, hmm. and sometimes I might have the words and I need it to sound like this, and and sometimes you know she may have that sound that okay I'm gonna talk about you know what I'm saying I'm gonna I'm gonna go a different direction with it or like. All the way across the board, your, collabor your collaboration should add something to the fold. I don't like just the token collaboration yeah. of like, I ain't really trying to work with nobody just because of a name or nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the newer generation, um, Rod Wave had used some of your lyrics on his new album. Uh, what was your response when you heard that? I thought it was hard. Yeah, I thought it was hard. I, um, I like his music. I saw he posted um he posted some it was like a super old mixtape of mine on a story one, one day uh randomly this was maybe a year ago something like that over a year ago something from like separation anxiety it was like a mixtape of mine that kind of was relatively under the radar like compared to I guess some of the numbers of some of my mixtapes that like trended really well or performed really well or had records that I performed for years. Separation Anxiety was, it was more like this. It was something I was doing like for me. I was kind of, it was some, some other stuff going on and I just made the music that went with that, that mind frame. And so like, when he posted that a year and something ago, it kind of, to me, suggested that he was in tune, had been in tune with my music. You know, similarly, like you said, like the, maybe the age difference or whatever. And even hearing, I was like, damn, like, if he heard that in real time, bro, it was like a teen kind of thing. But then when I think about the kind of music that he makes, it, it kind of made sense, you know? you know. I guess it's possible he could have just got hip to that music, but probably not likely. And um, same deal, the, the um, part of the verse that he used was from something like 2012. Yeah, produced by Coop. Yeah from the Produced by Cool record. And I, so I just, I honestly thought that was cool. Cause I'm like, um, if you know, you know. If you heard that and knew where it came from, more power to you. If you didn't, you know, artist to artist, if you thought it was, like I do it all the time. So <laughs> I don't feel no type of way. If anything, I may feel like accomplished or proud. Yeah. Like, like, damn, somebody thought enough of, of my little bars to throw it in their mix kind of thing. Like, to me, that's uh, that acknowledgement, that homage or respect, if you will, is what them them the stats to put up that, that make you great, you know, peer approval. And especially, like, man, this guy... This guy's a like superstar. Oh yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? One of like, the biggest artists in the game right yeah, now, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And so uh yeah, I just took it as like 
like some cool shit. Like that was that was super super cool. Um, yeah, even you know here and now I'm like, okay, shit I was doing then wasn't in vain. That shit was like I was saying, if you planting that seed uh, to propel this shit forward, cause uh, for what's out there. I'm probably more aligned or more in tune with that kind of music, with the, the rawness of it, the pain, than, than some of the other stuff as, as it, you know. Yeah, that, that was, I don't really have much more to say than that, yeah. that it was, I thought it was cool. Yeah, it's like a tip um, of the hat to you, you know? That's the, that's the only way I, I could have taken it. Yeah. Um, uh, one feature that probably caught everyone off guard when they first looked at the track list. <laughs> Charleston White. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, no. Like, yeah, that's my guy. You a fan of his uh, his interviews? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm I'm a fan of, of the interviews. Uh, I tend to be entertained or intrigued or some some combination of both of his interviews. But but we we met, we crossed paths like. One of my best friends had a birthday party, and he just happened to Charles and White was in town for, and he stayed an extra day or whatever, from what I understood. And he was at the same spot; they had a day party at the spot where my homeboy was having his birthday party. And I don't really go out like that, so I was just going out because it was my people's birthday. And um, and somebody tapped me and was like. Man, they go Charleston White over there, and I'm like, it was just such a random thing, like, cause I'm like in a club, I'm kind of on what I'm on in here, just super conscious of my surroundings. So I'm like, man, shut up, like, whatever. I was like, no, nah, for real. <laughs> and I turned around, he was like, maybe ten feet away from me, and it, like, I ain't gonna lie, it was kind of just laughable, it was so random. So I'm like, I didn't know he was in town, I wasn't really aware of that. And then uh, somebody between us, or somebody that had him there was like he wanted to meet me or whatever and we we just kind of chopped it up there and you know he had uh as much as he's kind of always projected like his disdain for rap and rappers and, and otherwise which i kind of even understand like the undertone of what he's saying you know more than just the the um i don't know the word i'm looking for like than the attention grabbing or, or you know, the, the part that's supposed to unnerve you. Sometimes it's, it's some depth to what he's saying. But upon meeting him, you know what I'm saying, he kind of like gave it up and, and let me know like what he thought of, you know what I'm saying, my brand of music or et cetera. And it was it was more or less a brief convo, but we exchanged contacts and, and I had a conversation with him past that. The next time he was around, he was in town, my people had him up here for a comedy show. I pulled up and, and went and hollered at him. And from there, um, I just had the idea of incorporating them into into a record. You know, from the couple conversations that we had and understanding what he thought of, I think upon me, he told me something to the effect of, I'm saying, you saying that shit that these young niggas need to hear before they talk to God. And it was a weird thing to hear somebody tell you in a club, but, I understood, I guess, what he was trying to communicate to me. And in the midst of everything else that he puts out there, I was like, damn, that's real. And for him to be such a contrarian, I'm like, I guess I kind of am too in my own way. And so that on top of me not caring what anybody thinks, because, you know, a lot of people probably don't like him, you know, but it's it's kind of a like double-edged sword because they still listening to him, they still paying attention to him. So I imagine you look at the track list and that's track two and it's like, man, what the hell? <laughs> I think and, that was everyone's reaction. Right, yeah. right, right. And, um, you know, over the course of like the sound bites and otherwise, um, it's, it's all over the place. It's some, it's some, it's some wisdom, it's some, insight and then he's just flat out like 
mocking, you know what I'm saying? Like by the end, just talking crazy to you and, you know, almost telling people to don't rap. Basically, you know? it's what he did say. But I can say a lot of that is how I feel too, truthfully. Like, same thing I said toward the beginning of this, like everything not for everybody. And just because people see this as a, a come up or a viable means of, you know, fast track to success. It ain't that. It ain't that damn simple. And I for sure don't want to hear everything that everybody got to say. And that's just that's just my take on my two cents. Like, so yeah, it was just one of the things again of, of alignment. And I mean, I had his his blessing and otherwise, like same thing. Like it ain't really. It's kind of the opposite of a uh, of cloud chasing, if you will. It's like I, I do something, understanding that it might not be well received. It might be shown. Somebody might have skipped over that song for whatever reason. But that, you know, it's okay. I did it. I did it because I wanted to. You know. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Um, Want to be there? Uh, mm -hmm. That first verse. You know, basically talking about being there for your daughter, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just kind of like describe how this journey's been these past few five years since you became a father and, you know, has it kind of opened your eyes to like what life is really about and all that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it's been different. Um, it's been different. My um, my perspective is, is ever changing. Uh, the questions I get asked, it, it's like it, it it lets me know how much, how closely she's paying attention, how much she's paying attention, listening and watching, even if I think she's oblivious to things and, and otherwise. So it it makes me like extremely conscious of you know. What I do, what I, how I express myself, how I carry myself, you know, what I, the things that I expose her to, I have around, the people. Otherwise, um, I'm just I move differently because I want to be there, you know, and, and I want to be present. Like I was, I was telling you earlier, like man, I ain't I ain't been down Yahweh as much because mm -hmm. you know my schedule is tethered to hers largely. Whereas I used to just, hey man, I'm gonna be down there tomorrow or. I'm, I bump into you and like, how long are you here? Like, I don't know. I'm just here, <laughs> and you know. I don't really. I look at it as a plus or a positive, like, to have it's, it's balance is, is the way I view it. But um, yeah, it's like they're very aware. Yeah. Even on the things you don't think they're aware of, right? Like they're paying right. attention. And um, and then it come back out so so candidly that it's like it'll make you check yourself. Like, man, what else? What else have you seen that I don't know that you saw? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that wasn't the worst possible thing. And for sure, like, I, I do my best to shield certain things, certain elements of even, like, my professional life at large. You know, she don't really, she don't really fully understand, like, what I do for a living. You know, I'm just daddy. Yeah. And I think that's cool, too. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And you even mentioned in the letter, like, um, that one day she's probably going to ask you about your music. You yeah. Know, and some of the things that you were rapping about that you may not be too proud of today. Yeah. I mean, and the best I could do is is uh, tell the truth. But I, I think it's important to evolve. Because my truth from five, ten years ago don't have to be how I'm rocking today. Especially if I can... If I can recognize that it was self-destructive, or I can I can be better than that, I can do better than that. Like, you know, I want to be able to um, explain it as best I can, and, and and also explain like that's where I was, and this is where I am, and this is where I want to be, or this is where I should be, you know, and not just. I, mean, I think we all like constantly evolving, but it's. Like, what's your stance on it? Like, how aware of it are you? Mm -hmm. Like, no, yeah. That's real. It's all about, you know, growth as a human, you know? For sure. Yeah. Um, so, retiring my jersey, mm. 
I'm sure this was a reason you put this as the last song on there. Yeah, for sure. The the reason was one. It was one of the first records that I did hmm. in this collection of songs, and so it was the first be the last, last be the first because Writer's Block was one of the last songs that I recorded, mm-hmm. if not the last song. And it ended up being the intro. And that's happened a lot of times mm-hmm. with, with my project. But also, it's like if, for the body of work that I put in over the course of my career, if that were the last song you were to, to hear, I think it echoes you know, uh, my whole sentiment of of legacy. And otherwise, like, when we talked about someone quoting something from a 10-year-old song um, on a number one album at that, or we talk about artists, you know what I'm saying, that kind of come behind, or or younger artists from a different generation being able to appreciate, you know, what I bring to the table enough to want to collaborate, et cetera, I mean that that speaks to that speaks to legacy. Um, I know what this game looked like when I started out, and a lot of the people that was ahead of me, a lot of people that were beside me, a lot of people was trying to come up. A lot of them ain't here. A lot of them ain't, you know, didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? Like I know, and and the other I always kind of make the comparisons of sports. And otherwise, I went by the name All Star. it's a lot of real ballers. It's a lot of people that had the talent, had the promise that ended up overseas, that ended up just not not making it professionally. Like, whatever, injuries, you know, is it like the, the ones that held up to their highest regard or standard, you know, it's, it's beating the odds. It's standing the test of time. Like, it speaks to legacy or the full body of work or, of achievement or otherwise. And so it's like, a, that's that's kind of where I left off the album, cause I'm like, one, the album as a whole, I'm like, this is me, this is me, this is who I am. I ain't really putting nothing on it. But overall, it's like, if you got any clue of like where this started or where I came from or how far I've journeyed to get to this point, I think it is something to be appreciated enough to like, and I I hope to be regarded as one of the greats, you know what I'm saying? And and it may not be a statistical accomplishment type of of feat, but I think even on, to get a record deal in 2004 and perhaps put out a top 10 hip hop album in 2023, like that's, when you frame it like that, I'm not gonna lie, like, me hearing it out loud, like, hearing myself say it, like, that's crazy. It, it, you know what I'm saying? And that's just, yeah, it, it ain't to, to prop myself up, but uh, the statement I, that I formally made on the song was like, I'm gonna make them retire my jersey. and. You know, so I, I consider myself to still be a work in progress, so I still feel like there's work to be done. I even, I saw a comment and I kind of pondered on it. I got a personal challenge that I, I for sure ain't gonna form to retire until LeBron James does in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Cause we like two weeks apart in age, huh. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, He's still going pretty strong. Yeah, my first mixtape I ever dropped, it was called It Ain't A Game No More. I dropped in November 2003. Hmm. Had LeBron James on the intro. Like, (laughs) I mean, I don't know where I got the sound bite from, but you know, I was doing something. But so when I read that, it was like, "Man, you can't retire till LeBron retires." I was like, "Damn, that's deep." Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like the span of his basketball career is obviously generational. Like his son on the cusp of going pro. Oh yeah. You know, and uh. Yeah, my, I've uh, man, I've seen a lot. Like I said, I've seen a lot come and go. I've seen some people shoot way past 
you know what I'm saying, where I was. And, you know, and it stopped there. I seen a lot, I seen a lot of people underachieve, you know. Um, I've had hiccups and hurdles and stalled out at times and probably got discouraged and otherwise. And, and I also got in spots and spaces where like, I ain't care if it made sense to nobody else. Like I had a, I had a plan, I had a, you know what I'm saying? I had my own purpose, I had my own motives, I had my own inspirations and that shit took me somewhere else. Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I charted on Billboard with a project that I was prepared to put out for free. You know, it was on the golden age of digital mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? The, the mixtape sites was booming. Mm -hmm. And you could you could drop a mixtape with the right push, tour the country kind of thing. And I was kind of like on that wave and kind of moving regionally and otherwise. And uh, my partner Street Symphony linked me in with, with Empire. And this was, like I said, 10, 10 plus years ago. And was like, man, y'all, you know, maybe put a play together. I was like, here. And that shit charted on Billboard. And it was like, I ain't had my face on the cover. I ain't had no videos, no <laughs> nothing. And I was like, at that point, I was like, oh shit, like, this shit bigger than, bigger than me. It's bigger than, than I thought it to be up to that point. And I was 10 years in then, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yep. like fast forward another 10 years, and I'm still, I'm still kind of almost feeling like that, you know. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him retire my jersey uh -huh. in due time. No, it's you know well deserved. Saying? Like, for sure. I'm sure you read Appreciate these comments it. all day, like how much you have touched these fans' lives. So it's like, for that alone, you should get your flowers. You should have your jersey retired, man, for sure. Man. So appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Uh, what's next for Grind Hard? Who's about to drive? You guys got something lined up for the new year? Man, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> I, I, I'll keep it real. This is this, this my mindset, this is my feeling about it. Whoever wants to drop, hmm. whoever wants to drop next, step up to the plate. You know, let's try to knock it out the park. As an artist, like me being in a more inspired space, and I now got like more the, the will and the initiative to like be more active. I feel like I can I can help, you know what I'm saying, the artists around me. Um, I saw almost all of them this weekend. Uh, Landlord flew in for the show, Troy Money drove down. I think everybody was there except for uh, Nard, Moscow Nard, who, who I talked to. I talked to him probably as much as anybody. You know, he was in Florida with the fam. But um, Trap Mandel was there, Red Dot was there. I, um, Man, I'm with whatever they with. And now as much as ever. Because I don't feel like the as a as a hip hop artist twenty years in, I don't feel like the shelf life is infinite. I feel like I can do this as long as I'm inspired to. But as far as striking while the iron's hot, as far as just pushing like, you know, whatever I got, whatever I got in the tank, like I feel how I've, how I've always felt. I want, want to share this shit. I want to spread that around. Like, I got a few joint projects I like to do. Hmm. and um, But I don't want to timeline anything because I don't know what I'm going to do next, to be honest. And I definitely don't want to put any undue pressure on anybody else. And just the same, you know, those around me, they might got something cooking that then I, I'm not as aware of as I need to be, but I'm, for sure I'm with it. Like, that's that's what it is. I ask Trip this every time that I interview him, man. Step Brothers Four, will it come out next year? Step Brothers Four Life. Um, I hope like hell it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shit. I, Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. That's for sure. I mean, that's that's the best, most honest answer I can give. You know, when we drop three, I think 
all signs pointed to and our best of intention was to come right back with four. Mm -hmm. Shit, we got off tour and I caught a case like three months later. And then maybe a few months after that, my daughter was on the way. So the next couple of years for me, between fighting the case, having a child, trying to sit still, get off, get off papers, you know, I, I'll take, you know what I'm saying, I'll accept that, um, that, that like set the delay in motion or the, you know what I'm saying, this time between three and Step Brothers for Life. Past that, you know, life has continued to do what life does. Mm -hmm. And there's been other things that, that have happened. Um, highs and lows that, that um, much like I just explained for myself, you know, it was a low point and real situation to deal with. It was a high point, life changing things that just took priority over, you know, over the music itself or, or and the same on the other end. And every step of the way, me and bro have only grown closer. You know, like we we never had a we never had distance or never had anything like even resembling a foul out. So I think we primed to make the best music that we've ever made. It's uh and I think now it's like we're approaching that, you know what I'm saying? Great timing for it. Perfect timing, if you will. But yeah, I, I hope so. I hope like hell is probably uh, 2020. <laughs> I'm sure he gets tired of fans asking you about this shit too. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's just I think we understand better than anybody else possibly could why, like the why, or you know what I'm saying, or or we understand that it's hard to pinpoint when. So it ain't really a problem for nobody to ask, but it's it ain't the easiest to explain. Cause the answer ain't never even been close to being like, nah, we ain't, we ain't doing another one or or I don't know if we are. I think we've never wavered or never not been certain that it's, it's happening. But of course, on the other end of it, it sounds crazy to constantly say, yeah, it's coming, <laughs> coming soon. So I like, we ain't, you know, we passed like putting a, putting a date on it until yeah. like, Probably till it's done, or until we we making that move, we pushing that button. But uh, unless he plan on coming with 12 more next year, like I think uh, <laughs> should open up his free time, right? Yeah, I think it'll be a, a priority. Okay. I think it'll be a priority for both of us. And I think I think we bring the best out of each other in terms of, of artistry, and he's already at the top of his game right now. And I think I got the the cobwebs off. On my pen and, and notebook and whatnot, and yeah, and I mean the engineer or the, the the person that's mixed the majority of our music, all our music together, and, and uh, Zips, he also produced two records on, on my album. Okay. So I think between. Between him, between Chef for Kitchens, the the uh, the band plays, the you know the uh, Fade Eastwoods, all the, all the producers that have the Street Symphonies, all the producers that that have helped like forge our sound up to this point, like Kevin, our engineer, now also producing is like pressure almost. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's it's time, man. Well, I think we just need to go on a retreat, from <laughs> bring all the kids and 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 the families and, and whatnot, and just just go somewhere for a couple of weeks and don't leave till we got it done. Cause we did the first Step Brothers in three sessions, <laughs> and um, the second one wasn't much more than that. I know the last one we we did that we kind of popped up on each other a couple times, damn it, until it was done. Yeah. But yeah, it's just you know, yeah, man, it's it's time for it. The show, man. All right, Lido, we appreciate your time, man. You want to shout anyone out before, uh, before we wrap it up here, bro? 
Nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. Nah, shout out to y'all. You know, whoever whoever eyes and ears this this might reach. You made it this far, you made it to the end of this, you know. Appreciate you for your time, giving us your time. Shout out to DGB, the entire staff, everybody that ain't here on site with us, man. Pull up, come to the Ville, you know. Come <laughs> holler at me. I hope to see y'all soon, all my guys. And uh, I, I want to say this, you know, as, I guess as an acknowledgement. Man, I really appreciate y'all for, for always supporting, always supporting and uh, endorsing my music and, and my brand you know, all this time. So we, we got about a 15 year running relationship. Um, before I even knew who any of, any of the people behind it were personally. Um, from torrent sites, from, you know, the, the, that era of getting your, your music out there as, as the times and technology have changed. Like, you guys at DGB were, were one of the first to like fully embrace what I was pushing. Y'all at one point were almost like my homepage or you know what I'm saying, website for uh, where you could find my music. Cause I was releasing music faster than I could damn near keep up with. There was a time when I could tell people go to y'all website to find what they were looking for. Man, where's that one song on this one? Hey, go to this site, it's on there. Like you can find it there. And I can remember that and I want to let y'all know like even as y'all platform has grown, as y'all scaled up, like I appreciate y'all always keeping it real with me. And I never have forgotten any of that stuff when when y'all didn't have to do it, when it wasn't personal. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I didn't I didn't even know y'all whatever compelled y'all to to show me that love from from a distance, I really appreciate it. And you know, I couldn't thank you enough and um I'm glad to have, you know what I'm saying, build the rapport that we got, you know, collectively as individuals. I look at y'all like an extended family and I, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of, of everything y'all been putting together aside from, from with me. I appreciate the love you showing my artists that I work with and um, especially, you know what I'm saying, with myself. I just wanted, you know, if it was anybody to shout out, I, I wanted to to say that, give y'all those those flowers or that or, or that thanks, acknowledgement, encouragement to keep it going, cause you know, it's, it's definitely I, I watched it grow, and I'm glad to have played whatever part in it that I played as well. You ever been right in the line of fire? How the fuck you gon' tell me where to draw the line and why? I keep it on me all the time, cause I ain't